Our thought for today is a majority of archaeologists are women due to their natural ability to dig up the past. Well, it is the last day of October, and we'll now be leaving the month of the Holy Rosary, moving into the month of the poor souls in purgatory, the month of November. But on this last day of October, I wanted to just share a little bit about the life of Father Patrick Payton, who is now venerable Father Payton. Some of you remember his rosary program and how he said that really important phrase, the family that prays together stays together. I'm sure you remember that. And he spread that message all over the world. Of course, the other very powerful message he said is, a world at prayer is a world at peace. A world of prayer is a world of peace. I would encourage you to read Father Calloway's wonderful book called Champions of the Rosary, where he talks about the history of the rosary and all the great popes and saints that have promoted the rosary. And just a little bit about Father Patrick Payton. He was born in County Mayo in the year 1909 to a very poor farming family. His mom and dad were very holy, very devout parents who prayed the rosary every night after dinner. Their family rosary was always prayed. They were again a poor farming family, raising potatoes and barely surviving. They had nine children. Father Patrick Payton would be the sixth of nine children. And as a young boy, he uh, would eventually, in his teenage years, emigrate to America with his brother Tom. They would go to Scranton, Pennsylvania to find work. His brother Tom worked in the mines, the coal mines of Scranton, and Father Payton was able to get a job as a janitor at the cathedral. And it was there as he worked as a janitor that he would spend hours in prayer and silence, you know, sweeping the floor, mopping the floor, and he would spend time before the Blessed Sacrament. And that's when the seeds of his vocation began to grow. And then a Holy Cross priest came and gave a mission at the cathedral, and he was so impressed by the Holy Cross Fathers of of Notre Dame that he felt called to go to Notre Dame and consider the seminary, perhaps become a Holy Cross missionary. So he went to the seminary, as did his brother Tom, and he was really felt called to the priesthood. But then two years before ordination, <clears throat> he was diagnosed, <coughs> sorry, diagnosed with tuberculosis. He was put into the hospital. It was seen to be very advanced tuberculosis. He was given a few months to live. He was really on his deathbed, and his confessor, his spiritual director, came and told him to pray to Our Lady, to pray to her son. And so he did. He prayed the rosary and asking Our Lady if it was God's will for his cure. And he felt completely cured, and the doctors could not believe it. So they examined him, did more tests, complete removal of all tuberculosis. So he was completely cured. He would then be ordained two years later with his brother, and then he felt as a thank you to Our Lady, he would spend the rest of his life promoting prayer and promoting the power of the Holy Rosary. So he would then begin his work in Albany, New York, doing a rosary program, and that spread to a national rosary program. He would go to New York City and do rosary programs. And one of the, um, the, the non-Catholic um, radio shows said, you know, you really need a celebrity. You need somebody on here. So he called Bing Crosby, and Bing Crosby answered the phone and decided to go on the rosary program. And then after that, Father Peyton felt God was calling him to go to Hollywood. So he went to Hollywood, and he would work all during the 1940s with the family rosary program and getting people like uh, Bob Hope and Gregory Peck, <clears throat> Loretta Young, and so many others to be on the rosary program. And then he began to go to Canada and the rest of the United States to give rosary rallies. Bishops would invite him, and tens of thousands of people would fill stadiums. For example, San Francisco, a half a million people in 1961 attended his rosary rally in San Francisco. So the family rosary crusades continued to grow. He would then travel all over the world to six of the continents. Uh, for example, he would go to Brazil. 1.5 million people were gathered in Brazil in 19, 
64, 2 million people in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and the Philippines, 1985, over 2 million people would attend these rosary rallies. So he would die in the year 1992. He was made venerable throughout the year 2000, and now he, well, he's now first servant of God, and now he is venerable. So what a great champion of the rosary in Father Patrick Payton, this really humble, shy priest from County Mayo would become a worldwide promoter of the Holy Rosary, and his goal was to have 10 million families pray the Holy Rosary every day. And so they say that during his life, that 28 million people saw him at rosary rallies. So he was the most seen person in the history of the world until St. John Paul II came along. So what a great future saint we honor. So if you have any special intercessions, he is now venerable. We're hoping for a miracle for his beatification, and then God willing, one more miracle for his canonization. One of the great rosary priests of our country, a great evangelizer. He knew how to use the media, first radio, then television, then films, and then these huge rosary rallies to spread the message of the gospel, to have Our Lady, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, help to lead the world towards Christ. So we pray today, Venerable Father Patrick Payton, pray for us.